as Shonin Bukgu. In 1687, born as the eldest son of a farmer in the former Asahi village in Echuyama, Yamagata Prefecture, I grew up in a very poor family. When I was a child, I didn't have much food to eat every day, and at the age of six, I collapsed on the side of the road due to hunger, and a monk approached and saved me. Hey, are you alright? Uh, I'm so hungry. I struggled embarrassingly to let out a reply, but when I answered him, the monk gently blessed me with food. From that point on, I began to be fascinated by the teachings of Buddhism. Buddhism is a religion founded and taught in India by a person named Buddha. It aims to emancipate people from the painful cycle of death. Eventually, I left home while I was young, shaved my head, and became a practitioner, or in other words, a monk, who lived by the rules of Buddhism. As a monk, I strongly wished to save people by transforming the unequal survival of the fittest society into a paradise free of pain. I worshipped the god named Yudonosan Daigongen, and based in Dainichibo Temple, to which the god belongs, I worked towards enlightenment in various directions, built a temple, and contributed to improving social welfare through acts of charity. My efforts paid off, and I was loved and respected by many as a living Buddha, but reaching that point entailed unimaginable hardship. I vowed to dedicate my entire life to training. Now, let me tell you in detail about my difficult journey that lasted for more than 70 years leading up to the point where I was buried alive. First, let's cover the training involved in Buddhism. Training refers to the spiritual training performed by Buddhist monks. It involves pursuing a state of being that is free of human desires for things like property, honor, and sex, and being satisfied with life itself. Negative emotions such as anger, resentment, jealousy, and hatred must also be abandoned during training. The training is diverse, involving dietary restrictions, fasting, control of breath, certain ways of sitting and standing, physical pain, and surviving in the mountains for several days, requiring fortification of both the mind and body. Praying to the Buddha also entailed unforgettable harshness. Buddhist training is virtually endless, and it is said to last 3,000 days. In the final part of the training, one must become a Sokushin Butsu, meaning a mummy that has fallen into deep meditation. A monk does not die, and it is believed that he will enter eternal meditation in order to save the masses until the advent of Miroku Bosatsu beyond the border of life and death. After the monk is buried, his body remains naturally preserved and intact, and he becomes a Sokushinbutsu Buddha. It is believed that the first monk to be buried alive in Japan was Kukai, or Kobo Daishi, who did so at a temple in the depths of Mount Koya, near Osaka in 853. Now I will explain in detail the steps in the training process to become a Sokushin Butsu. The first step is to cut out grains from one's diet, which is part of the Mokujiki practice. This involves not eating the five grains, rice, barley, wheat, red beans, soybeans, for 1,000 days while training hard in the mountains. I carried just a few vegetables and buckwheat nuts, mashed them into powder and ate them with water. I also had to give up salt in addition to the five grains, so my meals were extremely bland. 
After coming back from the mountains, for the second step, I went out to the city and stopped eating a total of 10 grains for 1,000 days while chanting sutras and receiving donations from citizens as part of my practice involving religious begging for alms. The 10 grains include the 5 previously mentioned ones, plus 3 kinds of millets, buckwheat, and corn. During this time, the only things one can eat are nuts, bark, tree roots, edible wild plants, mushrooms, and bamboo shoots. This is what makes up a mokujiki diet. With our digestive ability as humans, it is difficult to obtain sufficient calories from only nuts and vegetation, and cutting out grains results in substantial weight loss. In addition, even if one receives food from citizens, one must give it to another person in need. This is called almsgiving. The Mokujiki diet is followed for about five and a half years, but it is so harsh that most monks die along the way because they cannot get enough nutrition. By the end of the Mokujiki training, the body has eliminated all excess fat and water and one starts to feel more like a mummy. It is still not permitted to eat after that. One must fast for another 47 days. This is to stop internal organs from decaying as much as possible. 47 days later, one must drink lacquer sap to receive its antiseptic effects on the body. The side effects of lacquer include vomiting, sweating, and diuretic effects. Then, at last, the final training, Bochu Nyujo, or deep meditation in the soil, begins. This is when one becomes a Sokushin Butsu Buddha in the soil. One's apprentices make their master a small room, or stone chamber, in the earth about three meters underground and the lid is closed once the monk enters the stone chamber. The lid is also special, as it is blended with charcoal to prevent moisture and odors. The rules require an apprentice of the monk to ring a bell once a day outside of the stone chamber, and the monk inside must answer by also ringing a bell. These bells are used as a way to let the apprentice know that the monk is still alive. When the bell no longer rings, the apprentices will know that the monk has died. Afterwards, the monk is dug out, adjusted, and then buried in the soil again, and when it is dug up 1,000 days later, it will have become a beautiful mummy. This completes the Sokushinbutsu transformation. However, sometimes it doesn't go so well, and the monk's corpse rots without ever becoming a mummy. This is not just influenced by the effort of the monk, but also by the climate and environment, and the apprentices must also dig him up at the right time. Therefore, making it this far does not guarantee that one will become a Sokushinbutsu, and only very few monks succeed. Under such circumstances, I managed to carry out my training without delay and become a Sokushinbutsu. Today, training to become a Sokushinbutsu is no longer permitted in Japanese Buddhism, since abandoning corpses and assisted suicide is now illegal. However, there are 18 Sokushinbutsu mummies of the past in Japan, some of which are displayed in public. In closing, I will show you photos of the Sokushinbutsu that still remain today. These Sokushinbutsu have endured harsh training, striving for peace, prosperity, and health by eliminating people's suffering. Even today in the 21st century, humankind still has its conflicts, and some people suffer from starvation. The world has also been threatened by an unknown virus. What would the high-ranking monks who became Sokushinbutsu think of the world? Or will the world they yearn for be realized in the future? Perhaps even now, 
after becoming Sokushimbutsu, they are still praying for us. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. This YouTube channel introduces stories of various genres, including shocking news and unsolved cases from around the world, the biography of great men, mysterious stories from Asia, and more, all in the form of comics. You'll find plenty of content that appeals to your intellectual curiosity.